Merry Christmas my friends. I hope you guys are ready for a feast of Christmas food from around the world, from Korea to Brazil and a few countries in between. I'm not going to go too crazy because, well, it's just me and Evo basically. And uh, we're going to go hopefully away to Sweden. And we just entered a tier 4 lockdown so I don't want to cook too much food for just two people. And we're going to go away in a couple of days and what am I going to do with all of this food? Now it's very early here. It's 7 o'clock. I've been up since 5.30. I've done some work, done some editing, etc. Put my hair on these cute little buns because my hair is greasy and I need to wash it. But then I don't want to wash it before I go away on holiday or too far away before I go on holiday because then I can't wash it over there because I don't have the hair products that I need. So I'm just sitting it out until I can wash it tomorrow, basically. <laughs> Nobody cares! You may be wondering what we're going to have for food. I'm going to make a Bulgarian Christmas bread called a Koletna Pitka. I'm also going to start with my dessert. I'm going to make a Brazilian pave dessert, which is kind of like, it's kind of like a tiramisu, but not. But it's kind of like with the lady fingers that you soak and you leave it stand. So I'm going to make that this morning, like now, basically. I'm going to start off with that. I'm also going to make some turon, a turon that's been recommended from the pave dessert is from one of my clients, the turon is from one of my clients as well. We will later also have some yukio, which again is from one of my, well I would say she's more, more, she's my client but she's more my friend to be honest. She sent me a traditional Korean recipe to follow. I'm also, I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to start, hold on, I'm also, I'm also going to make rødbeert salad, beetroot salad. And I will also do a Bulgarian chomlek. I do have another steak, which I am going to keep out now because Tia has recommended me to do a, a Mexican carne asada, her recipe. So there's a way she does it. So I'm going to keep the steak out for now and I'm going to get cracking with the, with the turo and the pave dessert. So I'm going to get those ready chilling so that they're ready for tonight. And in the meantime, whilst that's happening, I'll do the bread so that the bread can rise and then I'll come back to everything else later. I'm also gonna have the American sweet potatoes with the marshmallows, I completely forgot about that. Now, I found a recipe from Jamie Oliver and I'm gonna kind of adapt it. I'm gonna do one half that's just marshmallows, I think the other half I'll do like the pecan topping. Um, I found some recipes where they have like the brown sugar and cinnamon and pecan. So I'll I'll I've, I'll use his recipe as a guideline, but I'm gonna still make I'm gonna make it my own because I want to stick more butter through there. I want to stick a bit more cream and sugar through there. So it's gonna be basically like a but adaptation of. The first thing I'm making here is the turon, and turon comes from Spain. It's basically kind of like a hard nougat. I think you can get them soft as well, but the ones I've had tend to be hard. You have like whole bits of almonds, but you can have also other nuts in them. Real turon is delicious. The one I'm making here, I'm making with 250 grams of ground almonds, lemon zest, 125 grams of sugar, some water, three egg yolks, some icing sugar and cinnamon to taste. Now the method that I did here was mixing together the cinnamon, the zest and the yolks before boiling the sugar water and then mixing that through it. I think I messed up the recipe because it didn't taste, it didn't look like a taron. I've had taron before and my one didn't look like a taron. It tasted nice but it definitely wasn't taron the way it should be so I think I got lost in translation somewhere with the recipe. I have no idea if this turon is made correctly. It's this consistency. It says now to um, cover it in a mold, which I don't have. So I'll stick it in cling film, and then you have to just let it rest with a weight on top. So I'll just put like another plate on top, I guess. I know what turon is. I have had it many a times, but I don't know if this is correct because the recipe is literally translated from Google Translate. So it says you have to like slowly, slowly beat with a few rods. I 
So I apparently forgot to add icing sugar in the last recipe and I don't know where it's supposed to go because it kind of missed from the, from the, what's it called, from the instructions, but it tasted nice. We'll find out if the icing sugar makes a big difference or not, but uh, we're going to make the pave dessert now. Here I am making the Brazilian pavé dessert, which is kind of like a... It's kind of like a tiramisu, although it's not made with coffee. It's like, it's different, but it's kind of the principle of using... It basically has lady fingers. That's all it has in common. Basically what you do is you boil down some condensed milk with actual milk, as well as egg yolks, and then you add in vanilla flavoring, and towards the end you add in just a cornstarch to thicken the mixture. You layer the fingers with the, the condensed milk mixture, one on top of each other, and then what you do is you top it off with chocolate. I put some fruits in between, per the, recommend, per the recipe they suggested put in some banana and strawberries, which was really nice, I highly recommend. And uh, top it off with the whipping cream. So don't put a layer of whipped cream in there. I did that, it was too hot, it melted. I had to start afresh. It's not a bad thing, Evo had more, but yeah, just make sure that you just, it's just layers of the filling with the fingers, and that's it. finish completing it now anyway but I'll just save the cream for the end and put it on top as opposed to in between the layers it does say that in the recipe but I think maybe it's an error because the way it looks it's like it's the the, the, um, the mixture soaks into the little fingers into the lady fingers and obviously you can't do that if there's cream in between and it, or it's cooled down so whatever it's my version we have a saying in the construction if it doesn't look right it's not right steak I've had it covered in salt as Patia's recommendations is sea salt sea salt is kosher salt I didn't know this it's just flaky sea salt that's what it is so that's been covered been covered and kind of soaking into the meat now all I'm gonna add to this is uh, I'm gonna marinate it with olive oil lime juice and cilantro and garlic finely sliced garlic and uh, that's it but I don't know whether I might just puree the garlic should I puree it or slice it? She said sliced. I'll do sliced. Carne asada is a traditional Mexican recipe, but I don't know if it's necessarily a traditional Christmas recipe, but I know it is a traditional Mexican recipe as I got it from my Mexican friend, Tia. This is actually her family recipe, which is marinating the beef, preferably overnight. I didn't do that, but you should do overnight in salt, pepper, coriander, fresh coriander that is, garlic and uh, oil, as well as lime. Yeah, lime too. Change of outfits, we went for a walk, as you can tell, the sun is out, makes for a change, we haven't seen a lot of sunshine lately, but now we're gonna make Bulgarian bread, and then I need to clean the kitchen, unload, reload, and then I'm gonna do more food prep. Blitna Pitka is a traditional Bulgarian Christmas bread, and what you do is you basically create like little tiny breads within the big bread, and in there you put in little locks, you call them, so it can be a, a little, t like it's almost like a for like a Bulgarian fortune cookie, it's probably the best way to put it, but also you put in there a coin, and whoever wins, they are gonna win money, or they're gonna have luck with money for the coming year. But basically it's a bread recipe that's made with yeast, flour, yogurt, lots of butter and you layer it on top of each other with bread between each other and then you fold it in, on, uh, you fold it in. I will make sure to put the recipe down below.
Next up, we are going back to Bulgaria and I'm gonna make some meatless chomlek. And chomlek is basically like, just like a tomato dish basically, but I'm gonna stick through there a little bit of courgette, like grated courgette, a lots of onion as well. So I basically cook down the onion and then add in the tomatoes. I'm gonna stick a bit of passata through there because I've got left over. And you just let that reduce down for a long period of time with a little bit of bay leaves and it becomes like, just like a tomato dish basically. Um, after that I will do some sweet potatoes as well, but for now I'm just gonna peel the sweet potatoes and then I'll boil them. So I'll get those two things ready now. Chomlek is apparently not a Bulgarian dish. It's a Macedonian dish. There can be some confusion, but Macedonia used to be Bulgaria. Regardless, basically what it is, I got lots of onion, about a kilo that I cooked down into small chunks in quite a bit of oil, in quite a bit of plant oil, big tomatoes, some cherry tomatoes, lots of garlic, and I just reduced that down on the slow heat for several hours, seasoning with savory salt, pepper, and paprika, as well as a bay leaf. Savory is a traditional Bulgarian spot. Savory is a traditional Bulgarian herb that I don't I don't have no idea what it's called over it. I've never even heard of it, but they have it in Bulgaria in quite a lot of Bulgarian dishes. And I also put in there some um, I also put in there some port just to cook down for flavour. I would ideally like to have boiled my potatoes or oven baked them, but the reality is um, I haven't got time for it. So I'm gonna microwave them. It's not ideal, but I'm gonna microwave my sweet potatoes, peel like in the skin, just full, and then I'll um, hollow them out because I need to do my bread. I won't have time otherwise, so. So for the mash, I just microwave my potatoes, which is not ideal, but I didn't have a pan available or an oven available. I removed the peel from the microwave potatoes and I mixed it with salt, butter, brown muscovado sugar, uh, as well as speculaaskruider, which is basically like a Dutch um, pumpkin spice mix. And then I just tasted it. It was good to taste. A bit of egg through there too, egg yolks, just for a bit more creaminess. And I simply spread it out. I topped one half, or well, one quarter with marshmallows. The other three quarters I topped with brown sugar and pecans, and it was honestly amazing. Next up a Swedish beetroot salad, which is very traditional. It literally is just some cut up beetroot. I'm gonna have some pre-cooked ones, a little bit of lime, mayonnaise, chives, uh, sour cream. I should have chives as well, but I couldn't be bothered to buy some just to like sprinkle a little bit through here. So that's it, very simple, straightforward. The Swedish red bed salad was very, very easy to make. It is honestly just a mixture of creme fraiche or sour cream with mayonnaise, and you put in there your apple, your beetroot, a little bit of lemon if you want, and that's it. Maybe some chives for flavoring. Yukyeon is a traditional Korean dish, which is basically marinated, thinly sliced beef that you then pan fry. You should pan fry it really in rice flour. I didn't have it available, so I just used corn flour. The marinade is made of soy sauce, rice wine, water, sesame oil, and sugar, with a little bit of garlic. And then the marinade, or the dipping sauce if you like, you use for it hot mustard. So I just use Coleman's English strong mustard. Water, soy sauce, vinegar, and sugar. This was really, really delicious. I highly recommend and very easy to make. Well, 
well guys, here we have the fruit of my labor. A little bit, he helped a little bit. I've been working, it's now, what time is it? It's five o'clock, perfect time to eat dinner. And I've been doing this since about six o'clock this morning. So we have here the uh, pita, shit, I forgot, tell me baby, my brain is fucking gone. Pita with legs inside? No, we no, what's it called? What's the actual name of the bread? Vanessa's cosmetic. No, it's not, it's not, it's not a Vanessa. I talked about it. Oh, well. Koledna Pita. Yeah, Koledna Pita. It's a Koledna Pitka. Um, here we have the Chomlek, which is apparently Macedonian and not actually Bulgarian. Then we have some American sweet potatoes with um, marshmallows and pecans on top. We have the Swedish beetroot salad with apple. We have the two desserts there, the, the Turon, which failed. It tastes nice, but it's not the way Turon is supposed to be. I know what Turon is supposed to be like. It's not like that, but it tastes nice. Uh, we have the pave dessert, we have the, the Mexican carne asada, and then over here we have the Korean insert here, I can't remember what it's called, I'm so sorry, but it basically comes, it's basically pan fried in, you should do it rice flour, I didn't have rice flour, so I used uh, corn flour instead, it's an okay substitute, steak, and then there's a marinade here with some mustard and honey and soy sauce and stuff like that, so that's it, I'm looking forward to eating actually because I'm quite hungry, do you want to open up the... Um all right, let's have a bread. What do I just tear this? You just take one and see what kind of what you will oh, get. Like this. Yeah, just take one and see what kind of look you will get. It's all about the look, baby. It's not about what's cooked, how it's cooked. It's a nice bread, though. Let me have. Don't just know. don't eat the the look inside, you know, the the surprise. Let me. Oh my god, I'm gonna dip one of one of these steaks. <clears throat> Sorry, I was filming this with my battery died, so I just basically pan fried it in oil. Mmm, that's all right. As we all know, calories don't count on Christmas. So let me know down below what you guys are doing for Christmas. It's coming up soon. The UK is in a lockdown in tier four. We're getting tested today, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we can still go to Sweden to celebrate with my family, but we'll see. Should be okay, as long as we test negative. But yeah, let me know what you guys are doing, and um, cheers, cheers, baby, to another Christmas. This is what, cheers. our third? Yeah, it's our third. So. third yeah, after to our third Christmas. Cheers. Uh, oh, let's get eating, because I am looking forward to this. Now for the failed to run. I mean, it might harden up a bit more over the next few days. If not, it's, it is what it is, basically. It's not supposed to be like this. It's supposed to be like hard, whenever I've had it, anyway. And I have to say, I'm not remotely in the mood to eat anymore. I'm really full up. But for the sake of the video, I will eat some more. 
and then I'm gonna do the traditional Christmas tradition of laying on the sofa and feeling fat, like everybody else. If it tastes nice, just the consistency is not nice, yeah? It's not the right. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh. I'm not saying it's not right, but it's not the right. This dessert is amazing. Thank you so much for the recipe, Lydia. Uh, by the way, I don't blame anybody if I got it wrong. I had, sp I had to follow recipes and I didn't follow them properly. I forgot to add some things and I don't think I had the sugar went properly. But this is delicious. Eva is going to have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the next couple of days. Oh, hell yeah. Whew. Just, I'm um, feeling at the moment like... Uh, uh, what are we going to yeah. do? Just give it to neighbors or something? Yeah, I can share it, yeah. Give it to the corner or something. Yeah. Yeah. I can give some now until it's fresh. Of course, anyway. Mm. We, 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 can, we can give them from, from that corner over there. Yeah. Where we're going to eat them from. Yeah, just like a slice and a half and just give it a half. Yeah. Message him if you want to. Yeah, I'll just call your pop -up. Um, we're gonna go over the favorite foods. So I'm gonna say my favorite is the sweet potato. I really, really enjoyed that. Second is the fried beef, the, the Korean dish. Third is this dessert. This dessert, this dessert is pretty amazing. Then it is the chomlek. Then it is the the carne asada. Then um, the turon in flavor. The beetroot is just a bit like. Bland and then this last because it doesn't really have any flavor. Me, I will place it differently. I will place because I'm like a different type of person. To me, it's only one and everything else. This one. This is tomb bar one. And for a perfect um, achievement of recipe, I'll place her number one as a, oh. the bread because she did it literally like for a first timer, the Christmas, the call it the pitka, like she did it like. Oh. Uh, no, honestly, because look, look, the color is perfect. Like it's a uh, it? nicely browned. It's soft. It's like it's flaky. juicy, flaky. It's tasty. It's nice, nice. Well oh, done. thank you, baby. You didn't even say yeah, that. Did. You didn't. I'm so no, you didn't even say that. <laughs> because you, you're doing the review now. I'm just saying. The oh, you. thank you. That really means a lot. Yeah, no, actually, well done. If my mom actually saw so it, she was going to tell you well done. Would she tell me that I'm a good Bulgarian and wife? And my mom actually is a professional cook. I'm just to say that. <laughs> Well, I'm just well, going to tell her well done to her because yeah. actually it does for a first time or like, like it's like 110% from 100% like well done actually perfect yeah. Oh that yeah. really means a lot. <laughs> anyway guys thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I know it's a bit different from what I do normally but I do actually really enjoy doing this cooking. Um, during the, I'll be honest, when I'm cooking not so much I get a bit stressed out sometimes but it's only because I have to think about so many things especially when you're doing so many dishes but I actually do enjoy cooking food like this and just I've tasted so many things today that I've never experienced and like I know this is really sad but I I love it it just makes me really happy because I generally you know you experience culture through food I think yeah, yeah, as well yeah. so it's I do want to do more days like this I just want to say one final cheers thank you to you guys you guys are the OGs if you're a true OG you'll insert anything Christmas related Christmas tree Santa Claus I don't care insert an emoji that's Christmas related related that makes you a true og but regardless of emojis or not i do really appreciate you staying here on this crazy journey on this channel on the other channel if you subscribe there as well i'll give you a special thank you there too but i'm sure i have a different audience here too so thank you so much for staying with me as i experiment my way through all the culinary foods of the world as i try different diets different lifestyles and more to come in the new year guys i'm really looking forward to it i truly hope that you have a really wonderful christmas i hope you can spend it with family permitted circumstances etc and uh yeah i'll probably be back in the new year with some new challenges yeah thank you